The Story of Jonah, retold by Mary Ald, illustrated by Diana Mayo. Long ago in the land of Canaan, there lived a man called Jonah. He was a prophet, and God often spoke to him. One day God told Jonah to go to the great city of Nineveh. The people there are full of wickedness, he said. You must tell them to change their ways. But Jonah ran away from God. He went to the port of Joppa and found a boat that was about to sail to a place far from Nineveh. The sailors would take him with them for a fee. So he paid his fare and climbed on board. The boat had not sailed far when God sent a great wind across the sea. The wind pushed up huge waves which battered against the boat and threatened to break it to pieces. The sailors were afraid. The boat was laden with goods to sell and now they threw these into the sea. Perhaps the lighter boat would ride the waves more easily. All this time Jonah was sleeping below deck. The captain came to him. Wake up! Wake up! he shouted. How can you sleep through this storm? You must pray to your God to save us all. Jonah joined the other sailors, and they drew lots to see who had provoked so great a storm. Jonah drew the shortest lot. You have caused this rage, said the sailors. But what have you done? I am a Hebrew, Jonah replied. And I worship the Lord, the maker of land and sea. And now I am running away from him. The sailors were terrified. What must we do to calm the sea? You must throw me overboard, said Jonah. It is the only way to make the storm die down. It's my fault that you are in danger. The sailors didn't want to kill Jonah. They tried to row back to land, but they could not. The storm grew even wilder than before. Exhausted, the men cried out to God, O oh Lord, please don't punish us for killing this innocent man. We are only doing as you wanted. And they took Jonah and threw him overboard. Immediately the sea became calm and the wind died away. The sailors were amazed by God's power. They made a sacrifice to him and offered prayers of thanks. Jonah sank deep beneath the waves, but God did not mean Jonah to die. He sent a great fish which swallowed the prophet whole. And so Jonah found himself sitting inside the belly of a fish. For three days and three nights, Jonah lay in his strange dark prison. And all the while, he prayed to God. Lord, you have thrown me into the deep and out of your sight. Yet still I pray to you. The water surrounded me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. And I thought I was lost forever. But you have saved me. I remembered you and I pray to you. And now I thank you. And I swear I will do as I have promised. Only the Lord can save. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it threw up Jonah out of its belly and onto dry land. God spoke to Jonah again, telling him to go to Nineveh. And this time Jonah did as he was told. Now, Nineveh was a huge city. 
so large that it would take a man three days to walk around it. Jonah did not hesitate. He went straight into the heart of the city and called out the Lord's message. Stop your evil and violent ways. If you do not, in forty days Nineveh will be completely destroyed, he warned. So the people of Nineveh believed Jonah and God's word. Everyone, from the richest to the poorest, put on rough sackcloth and began to fast. Not a crumb of bread, not a drop of water passed their lips. Even the king of Nineveh took off his golden robes and dressed in sackcloth. And he sat in ashes rather than on his throne. The king and his people cried out to the Lord, We will turn away from violence and our evil ways. Oh, spare us, mighty God, from your fierce anger. And God saw what they had done and heard their prayers. And he spared the city from destruction. Jonah wasn't happy with God's decision. In fact, he was furious. He could not understand why God had shown such mercy to the people of Nineveh. Why have you been so kind? He shouted at God. This is why I didn't want to come to Nineveh. I knew you would change your mind, for you are too full of goodness. You should kill me now, Lord. I would rather be dead than alive, he cried out in his fury. The Lord only said, Are you right to be angry? So Jonah went east out of the city. He built a rough shelter and sat beneath it and watched the city and waited. Would the Lord take any notice of his wishes? The city slept peacefully. During the night, at God's command, an amazing vine grew up over Jonah's shelter. All through the day that followed, the vine shaded Jonah from the heat of the sun. The prophet was delighted. The next day, the vine was dead. God had sent a worm in the night, and it had eaten the plant so that it withered away. The day was extremely hot and windy. The sun beat down on Jonah's head, and he felt faint with heat. Jonah's anger returned. I am better off dead than alive, he said again. And God asked Jonah, Are you right to be angry? that the vine has died? Yes, I am right, said Jonah. The vine was a good thing. And God explained his actions to Jonah. Why do you feel sorry about the vine's dying? You didn't plant it, and you did nothing to make it grow. It came in the night and died in the night. And yet the great city of Nineveh stands. Isn't it better that I should spare the lives of 12,000 people than that of a single vine? 